In this video, I'll be showing you how you can automatically spawn in cats and make an automatic cat gift farm. I love cats. Cats are great, both in Minecraft and the real world. But they are definitely better in Minecraft. They follow you around, they teleport to you, they give you gifts, they scare away creepers. What isn't there to want from a cat in Minecraft? I couldn't imagine any reason. Well, maybe because you get super attached to it and then really sad if anything happens. Like, really really sad over a fake cat that you have an unhealthy relationship with. Yeah, why wouldn't you want a cat? Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way, let's start first with the spawning system. I'm here in my testing world so I can explain a little bit better how cat farms work. Spawning cats is based on village mechanics. And if you know anything about villages, especially iron farms, you can forget it. Absolutely not applicable. Iron golems have a set range around a villager that they can spawn in. Cats have a set range around a player within a village that they can spawn in. There are four separate quadrants a cat can spawn in around a player, each 17 blocks apart and 22 by 22 blocks large. And as you can see, it doesn't matter that the villagers are off-center, because the cats are going to spawn based on the player, not the villager. However, there are a few village requirements that have to be met. For example, there needs to be five villagers attached to five beds. These villagers do not need to have workstations, but they do need to have beds. If you wanted to, you could have more villagers, but there needs to be at least five. Have I said you need five yet? I'm not sure. If you're trying to build this in survival, I understand that getting villagers can be super annoying. So, instead of getting five separate villagers, you could always just get two and then breed them while they're standing on the beds. Just give them like bread, potatoes, carrots, a whole bunch of those, and they should be fine. Once these five villagers are in place, they're going to spawn an iron golem. If you want to learn more about why and how, I have a whole video on it where I go into way more detail. I have a link in the description. But, you don't want these iron golems to spawn in the spawning platforms for the cats. So I recommend just putting one like this just near the villagers so they don't feel the need to spawn another one. You can let them spawn one and keep it there or make an artificial one. Both will work, you just don't want them spawning another one. Okay, so now let's talk about how these cats actually spawn. When you're standing on this block directly in the middle, the cats will spawn in one of these quadrants like I've already said. It's an interesting mechanic, but it's just how it works. You can have a total of 10 cats in this range at one time, but after that, they're going to stop spawning. However, this farm does work day and night, so the villagers can be sleeping or they can be awake, cats will still spawn. An attempt can be made every 1200 ticks, which is about one minute in real time. I want to emphasize, it can be made every 1200 ticks. This farm is inherently slow, and a cat does not spawn every minute. I think I've been recording for about 20 minutes now, and only 3 cats have spawned. But, like I just said, this farm works day and night. So if you're patient, you can accumulate a lot of cats. If you're not patient, you might just want to find the nearest village, because there's usually cats there already. I also need to mention, cats that spawn like this can despawn, so you'll need to get to them quick. So let's now move on and talk about what to do after the cat spawn, so you don't reach that 10 cat limit. The most common design I see is the use of trap doors and rabbits. To show this in action, these cats will attack a rabbit that spawned here, think that they can run over these trap doors, and then fall down either into a water stream or just fall all the way down. Cats don't take fall damage. And obviously, the bunny won't just be sitting here, you'll need to put it in some kind of boat or minecart so it doesn't run away. Cats will see these rabbits from about 15 blocks away, so putting one on each side of each of these quadrants will do the trick. So the real goal of luring them is to get them out of these quadrant areas as fast as possible, out of this entire square as fast as possible. And really, once you do that, you can do pretty much anything with them. If you're a cruel person, you can make a string farm, because yes, cats drop string, but don't do that. If you're a sane person, you could drop them into your base, and then just have a whole bunch of cats all the time. Or you could put them into one little spot if you're planning on making a creeper farm, or wanting to scare away phantoms. What you can do with them after you get them out of this range is pretty much up to you. But you just have to be patient, because this farm isn't super fast, especially if you're waiting for a certain type of cat. I mean, you could go through like 20 cats and still have no luck. So now that I've gone through all the basics, there's not really much else I have to say. The rest of this farm building can be up to you. You can either copy other people's designs or make your own based on your needs. You can use one of these quadrants, you can use two of these quadrants, or you can use all four of these quadrants. But if you want cats to spawn in your world, this is how you'll have to set it up. Just make sure you stand in the right spot and you know where the cats are going to be spawning. Let's now move on to gift farms. So you've got your cat now, and like I said earlier, you can do pretty much whatever you want with it. However, what I see as most commonly overlooked is a cat gift farm. If you're unaware, cats like to snuggle up with you in bed when they're standing and you're sleeping. It's a really cute animation by itself, but you can also get some items from it. 
anytime you sleep and a cat is curled up on the bed next to you or with you, there's about a 70% chance you're going to get an item. The items they drop include raw chicken, rotten flesh, string, feathers, rabbit's foot, rabbit hide, and phantom membranes. Phantom membranes, however, are about five times less likely to drop than the other things. So what I've built over here is a super simple design by Raysworks. It's super compact and are great for items that are usually difficult to get. But there are some important details I should probably go over. Starting with these hoppers, a cat usually drops the items right next to the bed or next to the player. So if you're standing here and you sleep in a bed, if I get lucky, the cat will drop the item and we can check. I didn't get anything that time. The cat would drop the item here or here. This cat also needs to be tamed and standing up. If you sit it down, it's not going to be able to do the sleeping animation and therefore not give you a gift. You may have also noticed this cat is on a lead. That's to keep it from teleporting around while it's standing up away from its spot. Also, all these blocks that the cat can teleport onto are covered in carpet. That's because cats don't teleport onto carpet. They can teleport onto glass and other blocks. So to make sure the cat doesn't move around, you'll have to cover an 11 by 11 area centered around the cat with blocks that cats can't teleport to. You should also make sure you have a block right here so the cat doesn't run up onto the bed and run off. Also, I just did a quick test and the cat did actually throw an item at this pillow, so you might just wanna put an extra hopper under this bed. All right, so I know right now this farm doesn't necessarily seem the most appealing because automating this might not be the thing for you. You might just wanna take your cat to bed with you and be done with it. However, this can be useful while AFKing for other things. You could have a macro set to constantly be right clicking on the bed so whenever night comes, you skip the night, you get a gift, and then you're still AFKing. But if you want that to work, there are a couple more steps you have to take. The first of which, lowering the place you have to stand on. And this is a little bit weird, but you do have to use something like an enchanting table. So when you're standing right here and facing straight forward, you're on the bed. You also need to use a piston and a daylight sensor. These are so far apart because the daylight sensor sends a different signal out depending on the time of day. So when it first turns night and you get into bed, if it's too close, the piston will still be extended and you'll wake up underneath the piston and this farm won't work. But if it's far enough away, the piston won't be extended right at the beginning of the night or at the beginning of the morning. So you'll have time to sleep, wake up, and then get pushed. And to show that in action, I'm going to turn on my macro, go to bed. I'm going to wake up standing on top of the bed facing towards the piston. The piston will extend and I'll be standing right back on the enchanting table. That process will continue to repeat until I come back from being AFK. Anyway, that's what I've got when it comes to cat farms and mechanics. If you like this video, make sure you check out other videos on my channel. I have different farm tutorials similar to this one. And as always, if you have a question, make sure you leave it in the comments, and I'll catch you next time.